Hi, everybody. Oh, yeah, you can hear me. Great. Uh, so, uh, I will probably Im immediately invite the other speakers on stage, uh, starting with Kurt Bollingham from Ch French Tech Mission. Please. Elizabeth Barley from Tech Hub. Carlos Eduardo Espinal from Seedcamp. And Liva Parcone from the Latvian Startup Association. I'm good to sit here. Good, yeah. So, we're going to talk about talent, which is uh, pretty, uh, a pretty key component of our tech ecosystem. It's probably the most coveted commodity in the market. And what I would like to understand from this panel is what are the main strategies, the factors which are most effective at attracting and retaining talent. Uh, it is a pretty fluid moment in Europe and elsewhere. Um, we have Brexit in London, which is going to hit London like a bludgeon. And uh, some um, professionals in the tech uh, in this industry are already leaving. Paris is trying to snap up those talents. And, and there is a sort of interesting trend coming out from Silicon Valley, with the so-called off Silicon Valleying, with uh, lots, essentially, of uh, founders, developers, and engineers leaving Silicon Valley to go somewhere else, often in Europe, according to Atomica. So, yeah, that's essentially what we should try and explore. So what works, what's happening, and uh, what will happen next? Maybe we should start with Elizabeth. Um, oh, I'm trying to use this thing. Oh, yeah, by any means, send your questions on Slider. Um, Elizabeth, uh, you have a pretty global perspective because you, you work in London, but you have branches in... We do. Yeah, in several other countries. So, from your experience, from what have you been seeing over the last years, who is winning the war for talent and how are they winning it? Oh, that's, that's an interesting question. Um, yes. I, I think we, we still have the, uh, the age-old challenge uh, that, that we all have, uh, which is losing talent to larger companies with bigger budgets. Uh, so I think that um, we're seeing uh, some of the larger scale-ups starting to do better um, because they're a, a higher investment and are um, able to put more money in, you know, into the hands of, of their employees. Uh, and so they're, they're able to, to woo them, win them from going to the big companies because uh, of the startup approach, the startup mentality. And that's a company level, they... right? Yeah. In terms of ecosystems, what's, what's the, what is the strategy which works best in terms of cities, countries? I think it's really important um, around cities that are, are creating clusters, uh, I think you, you get a real concentration of talent. Mm. So anywhere that, uh, that the government uh, or that organizations uh, within the city are focusing on bringing people together, um, that makes a difference because you have many more people to choose from who come to that city um, of their own accord. So essentially there are some leaders in each ecosystem which... Uh, driving the sort of the yeah, pool. Yeah, I, I think um, capital cities always do uh, really well. Mm. Um, you know, where, when when there is not enough talent uh, in the country, p people are already being drawn to that. But city. how do they draw them? The, the, how does the city draw them? The draw the cities, the companies. What are, what what works? Is it about the pay? I mean, the salary. Is it about the work to life Salary balance? salary is part of it, but. If you're, if you're running a startup, you're often going to be hiring people who are motivated by the, uh, by the ethos of the company, by the vision of the company. The you culture. Know, yeah, we, you know, we hear all the time, oh, millennials, you know, they, they, they want to do something that really matters and that sort of thing. It's, it's true. Um, we're seeing fewer people expect to have a job for life with a big company that, that's not really about them. We're seeing many, many more people who want their work to matter, who want their work life to matter and be aligned with their own okay. values. And in terms, who is winning the war for talent in Europe right now? What are the best cities uh, well, are, I, are doing that? I think in London we do incredibly well on talent yeah. um, because it is the centre of so many different types of industry. Uh, we draw people in, it's, a, yeah. it's an English-speaking city, um, and so people from, from everywhere uh, come and, and settle in London at Tech Hub. It's a welcoming city. It's it, open it to immigrants from everywhere. Well, we, uh, we are at the moment. You, you <laughs> we're, are, right? We're, we're, we're not too sure what's going to happen days, after that. 30 days, how much? 32? Something like that. Um, so the B word, uh, yep. the big Brexit word. Um, <laughs> Carlos, you are in London too. Um, have you seen any sort of change in terms of 
popularity of the ecosystem over the last two years, I suppose. Yeah, I think we, I think we run the risk of having this panel become about Brexit. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, I mean, because I, I'm an immigrant to London, so we have to get it out of it uh, of the way before we start yeah, talking about other things. It was funny because we were having this chat yesterday at the at the investor summit, and the problem with the Brexit question is, it's you know, the, Europe's had a, a stability around ecosystems for you know, at least six years now in terms of growth, but in in different niches and different franchises. And, you know, clearly Brexit's throwing that up in the air. With mm. New jurisdictions popping up as perhaps the preferred jurisdiction to start a company in Europe and, and bringing all sorts of questions about, for example, even, even with fintech, like where are, yeah. where are going to be European licenses coming from? You know, I know Lithuania is, is bubbling up uh, on that side of things. So I think the, the question is it can't really be answered. I mean, we could sit here and debate about it. It's not only about talent, right? You're, you're saying that it's a wider problem. It's about other things, like essentially banking license for fintech. It's not only talent. Uh, the, yeah, the I mean, it's, it's broad. Yeah, it's, talent it's, is a, a big I mean, thing. Look, what was the draw of London before the vote of 2016? What was so good about London that made it so attractive? I mean, there's a really good book. Um, by uh, It's called where, where, I Do, where Good Ideas Come From. Where good ideas come from. Where good ideas come from. And it talks about the idea of, of collisions and, and how when you have a velocity of, of any one thing and a, and a momentum, you end up having like an exponential growth of that. And right. I think London, you know, where Seedcamp started and where Tech Hub started, you know, there was a lot of people that were just there in terms of capital, in terms of entrepreneurial experience as a bridge into Europe. And that just bred momentum. And that momentum explains a lot of the things that are now existing as infrastructure in, in London. I don't think, I think it's disingenuous to say that other countries don't have the capability to do that. It's more of just where it starts. Most things where they right. start. Right, but now it could, I mean, the momentum could abate, I suppose. I think, I think that is the debate, right? Like, I think that that's, is, that's why it's... We get an answer in one month. Capital B word is like, what, what's going to happen? I think, you know, we, I'm happy to explore... Yeah. And speculate on what could happen, but I mean, I think. Well, yeah, well, we are not here yeah, to divinate knows, so things. There you go. Right, yeah, that's interesting. Essentially, as London used to have a momentum and it's sort of laying on the ground, we can see other little um, vultures uh, rounding, circling over it. Uh, the, the main vulture is uh, France, <laughs> I think. Uh, so uh, I think that I, I read a very interesting um, AI uh, plan from. Um, Macron's, um, one of Macron's main tech advisors, Cédric Villani, which essentially was advocating to, I think, double salaries for uh, AI researchers and developers uh, to, to draw them back from London and um, the US to France. The proposal didn't go through, but still the spirit remains. France is very keen to draw back talent. Mm -hmm. So how this is working out, Kat? Well, first of all, I think the first question is like, what talent are we looking for? Yeah, right? so that's stage, an interesting thing you told me backstage, because it really depends on what talent well, you I mean, target. Yeah, so I mean, we, we look at talent, well, so, sorry, just quick intro, I work for the French Tech Mission, so I'm actually in government, this is part of uh, one of mm -hmm. my many missions of um, making sure that France becomes one of the best places to start. The startup world. nation. Well, yeah, to a certain extent. Um, and so talent is obviously the biggest, hottest topic right now that we're looking at. And when we think of talent, we're actually looking at two things. We're thinking of talent from an economic perspective. Like, we, we, the, in, the way we go about this is that we actually have our own portfolio of roughly 110 startups that have raised more than 20 million. And these are the startups that we're following the closest. So these are the startups when we know that they're, you know, they're missing certain types of profiles, they have certain regulatory challenges and things like that. And so based on these 110 that are all growing like at over 100% thereabouts, um, you know, the talent that we're looking for are one execs. Um, executives is the biggest uh, biggest right. gap in France. Like we don't have the same kind of natural connections like that London would have with San Francisco or with New York, where you know you tend to breed quite a bit of executive talent that already knows how to take a company from 10 to 100 and from 100 to 500. Um, product is a bit of an issue in mm. France as well. We have a very very strong culture of engineering, um, but product is a completely different ball game. So that's something that you know we're looking for as well. Um, and then when we talk about engineers what we're really talking about are more senior level engineers that can kind of handle like a two pizza team, um, roughly. And then, uh, and then there's also an overwhelming um, a need for go-to-market professionals right. that need to be. And are you trying to grab them? Uh, what's, your, what's your 
Well, so, so strategy or tactic or so beyond the, like the actual strategy or tactics, the question is why aren't there more people in France already today? Yeah, so, okay, well, you solved that, and that's... Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's super interesting, right? It's like, you know, the first thing that you normally do is you go and talk to them. Like, we actually went and interviewed quite a lot of VPs that were based in London, that were based in New York, um, based in San Francisco. And the thing that I found really interesting, particularly with regards to Paris, is if you're like, hey, guys, um, you know, especially, sorry, we especially approach people after liquidity events. So we know that, you know, this is not like a... Um, Um, funding is not as much of an issue. I'm like, hey guys, how do you feel about, you know, living one of the greatest cities on earth for a while and working at a killer startup? And they're like, yeah, that sounds great. And 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 usually, like, we'll, we'll work with people up to a certain level in the funnel. So quality um, of life is a big... Quality of life is huge, factor. especially... Oh, it today. is, it's of course. Huge. I That's mean, one of the reasons why San Francisco is essentially slightly declining in that, in that regard, right? Well, and, and I mean, this is where your country really plays a big deal, right? When you're recruiting someone, you're not recruiting someone from like nine to seven or nine to nine even, you're recruiting them for the weekends, you're recruiting them for the evenings, you're recruiting them for uh, the families, um, you know, for where their kids are going to go to school and things like that. And that's kind of the role that, that you know, government has as a, as a sort of, like I tend to call us a, a meta recruiter. Do you think riots will be a big problem for quality of life, for tech entrepreneurs? Yeah. It has, it has been going on for for two months or whatever? Well, yeah, so, so, <laughs> so you know what was, really the riots. Funny, what was really funny is um, right, when, um, right when the gilets jaunes, so the yellow vest uh, pop up, it was right in the middle of an event that I was running with the president um, <laughs> where we had like 20 of like the top, you know, we had like GPs from um, like Tiger, Sequoia, we had like Scott Sandel, we had Ron Conway, we had all of them in Paris while this was happening. Um, and, and I think, I mean, w w why that's really interesting is that, of course, it obviously sparks a certain debate on, wow, do we, how do we feel about being in France right now? Mm. And so my answer to that is that um, the, the people that France attracts and the people that London attracts or the people that, you know, whatever, like Houston attracts are all very different depending on segmentation. And I can tell you a little bit about the segment of people that naturally gravitate to Paris. So these were the guys who like in the room, you know, these things are happening outside. And they're like, look, there's like, we're currently in the middle of, a, of, of the crisis of modern democracy right now. Right. You know, people are experiencing it differently. We're experiencing it as the yellow vest. Some people are experiencing it as electing Trump. Some people are experiencing it as breakfast. As elected something. And also we don't have it yeah. so bad. Yeah, <laughs> we're many, we're many. Yeah, of course. Um, and so, so actually, Actually, I mean, contrary to what you would expect, something that we're seeing quite a bit is it's pulling people towards France because it's forcing them to kind of take a stand in what's happening. And a lot of people are actually siding with the president in terms of the vision of what he's trying to push forward, which is just, you know, unfortunately the kind of sort of, you know, executive leadership that you're missing in a lot of places. And so startups, regardless of what's happening, tend to feel a little safer right. around a president that gets it. Yeah, um We've been talking about this sort of clash of titans. Berlin is not here to be represented, but Berlin is another major player. But maybe we should look at uh, medium-sized players and how they're coping with the, as, as being like collateral damage in this sort of uh, war for talent. How is Latvia coping? Yeah, definitely collateral damage. That's a great, uh, great name for it. Uh, but obviously... Um, Can I just send questions, please? Since... Um, Since the Baltics, all of the three Baltic states, uh, we are fresh new ecosystems in startups. Uh, so all of these challenges for us, uh, they're new. And so we have to move fast and we have to, uh, well, they're new compared to Paris and London. We are way, 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 they're no, way oh, kind God, of, uh, already um, past us. Uh, so we are, we find ourselves in this position. Um, after we joined the EU, we lost a lot of uh, talent kind of in a very, very fast, uh, uh, quick period. In just a few years, we lost a lot of talent. Um, Where did so they go, mainly? Actually, many of them went to London. <laughs> Good. Oh, uh, because, as you know, FinTech is... Uh, Uh, fintech is one of the areas that's one of the strongest mm. and if you want to be in fintech that it's kind of the branding for UK and fintech is very strong so uh, they often go there um, they uh, sometimes they go to Silicon Valley but I would say that London is kind of our biggest competitor and London uh, UK is, has actually been very uh, I wouldn't say aggressive, but very good in branding itself in, in, in the, the Baltic states. Uh, and I think not just the Baltics, the region itself. Um, but I think the biggest uh, brain drain is also related to education. 
And that is, I think, one of the main top challenges that we need to face because obviously uh, the people, the students that go to the best universities, they wanna, they have ambition and obviously right. you can't blame them. And that's the best they can do for themselves. They go and they get the best education that's possible within the European Union. And uh, now we have kind of this um, challenge that goes both ways. We want to bring those students back uh, and make startups here. Uh, and then, but at the same time, we also look for ways on how, to, how we can attract talent. Yeah. Uh, because um, we see that the Baltics are actually great places to build a startup because they're way more affordable. Uh, at the same time, Riga has amazing connections. We have a huge airport that goes like in two hours to anywhere. And uh, there are many kind of these uh, great things about building a startup in the Baltics that you can do in London mm -hmm. with the uh, expensive living. And, and, and we have actually, what we're trying to brand as well is that we have access to talent, uh, not just from the Baltics, but from the nearby. And what we see right now is that there are many countries uh, bordering the Baltics uh, to the other side, to the east of us, and to the central and eastern Europe who are looking for the kind of smaller hubs and they are coming over. Because so how many people are you um, attracting as opposed to not losing? <laughs> uh, that's a very tricky subject. Um, <laughs> it's very hard to say. But I think one of the best uh, cases... But we people have are coming in from other parts of the EU or the yeah, world. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that will yeah. probably be our... We're kind of trying to solve a puzzle in real time and we know we have to solve this puzzle uh, way faster than the competition and solve it both ways. And it's kind of a very fast Rubik's Cube that's moving and you try to both not lose, bring back, also attract, and uh, see these target markets in, in, in all possible directions. And I think uh, I want to mention that, for example, we have a few unicorns uh, that have grown out of the Baltics, but one specific unicorn is Taxify, uh, which is way different in that it has actually stayed uh, in Tallinn with the whole headquarters and the whole 400 people or maybe I think 500 already, uh, they're actually based in Tallinn. It's, for example, TransferWise, that's Estonian founders, and that's great and amazing, and it good, it's great for branding. But uh, for Taxify, they have, uh, I think, proven uh, for a branding purpose that you can actually build a unicorn uh, coming out of the Baltics, mm. staying there. You can do, you, uh, the do you have Uber in Latvia? Not in Latvia, but I think we have in Tallinn. Okay. But they're not doing very well. No, I'm just saying that. Yeah. I mean, we it's, have... It's a good app, but lack of competition is also um, a factor, possibly, in the success. I think we have, uh, we have uh, two platforms in Riga, but at the same time, I think they have, like, eight platforms in Lithuania or, or and even way in Tallinn, so they have a, a lot of local ones. And we actually see the competition coming from the other side as well, because Yandex from Russia just came to Riga. Right. Mm. So they're also planning to expand from the other direction, and then they're coming through the Baltics. And, and, and let's see how that goes as well. But yeah, definitely uh, Taxify is the monopoly here. Okay, I'm, not, I'm not seeing any questions from the audience, which is very unfortunate, which means, because it will mean that I want to speak more. Uh, so, something I would like to tackle with you, and feel free to interject and interact with each other, interrupt too, uh, is how are uh, European ecosystems uh, uh, trying to vie for talent with mm. non-European ecosystems? So, is, for instance, Silicon Valley a worry, and how are you tackling that question? Mm. Is China a, a worry at all? And if it is, how do you go about uh, targeting talent to from China, we moved to China and convinced them to come back. Elizabeth, it's, you start. Well, it's, um, it's, it's interesting looking at these uh, outside of European, very, very large uh, countries with high populations. Um, we haven't seen lots of people, say, coming from China, uh, but in the UK, we have a, a long historic relationship with India, for example, mm, yeah. uh, and India is really um, focusing on uh, technology and uh, on their, their university students. In Bangalore alone, you have 80,000 computer science graduates every year. Um, and what we see is still a close relation, a hiring relationship with people uh, from India uh, because you, you, you get a certain standard and there's that okay. long-term relationship. Mm. I'm not sure how it works when you're trying to establish a new relationship. And that's about attracting people from 
uh, India, right? Indian uh, engineers, India developers, UK, and coders. Yep. What about people from the UK or who used to be in the UK, who moved to San Francisco, to Shenzhen? How do you, do you have a strategy to attract them back? Do you try to do that? It's not something uh, that we do, but what I see more mm. um, is uh, founders going to San Francisco, uh, perhaps more than um, engineers uh, going there. I think right. London provides a strong enough opportunity that they don't tend to go over there, but if you're raising money for your company or something like that, sometimes people still go to the US. Less so now. Less than, than before, happen. right? Yeah. Kat, do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, it, so in our case, in our case, like, I don't know, talent to me just seems like a, mostly an immigration game at this stage, um, mm. you know, and, and it's really interesting to kind of, you know, look at that because you can, you know, be as attractive as you want if you can't actually process large amounts of, uh, you know, an incoming flux and things like that, you're going to, you're not, it's not really going to work out. So one, one reason that I know, and it's really hard to find proper indicators, but one indicator that we look at to see how well the French tech ecosystem is doing in terms of attracting foreign talent is, uh, is actually international schools. Mm. Um, if the international schools all around the tech areas are completely full, uh, that usually means that we've suddenly had a big uh, okay. influx. And actually, if you, if you look at it right now, our biggest challenge in France, it's not, it's not actually um, really attracting people. It's not even so much um, bringing people back home. We, it's just there's all this infrastructure that we need to put in place when you have a really big international community. And I think like going back to what you were saying earlier as well about you know, how do you compete as a city and as mm. a country, um, again, there's a bit of a, there's a, bit of a, it's, it's a product issue as well. So I think something that people talk about a lot um, are visas. Um, I can tell you one reason why we have a lot of people coming back to France is because their J-1 visas are up also, and they just can't stay in, in the US and they have to come back. So, so visas are actually really interesting because everybody talks about a startup visa, but all startup visas actually are completely different from one country to another. Like, um, Liva was just telling me that in Latvia, for example, the, the startup visa for employees um, requires you to prove that you couldn't have hired this person mm. um, in Latvia over a certain right. period of time and things like that. So, so, so the same in London, and I think one of the things we're going to have to see yeah. is um, talking about schools. Is it, we have we have some of the best universities in the world. Yeah, uh, in do. the UK, it, it's it's incredible. I studied there. Uh, good, there you go. <laughs> um, it's you know it, there's incredible talent there, um, but the the government a couple of years ago changed the rules uh, for visas post study. Uh, you, you used to get, I think, two years. Who did it? Um, not sure. I think the Home Secretary, right? I imagine. Who is currently the so Prime Minister. That is yeah. true. Yeah. There, there are many things I think she could have made different decisions on. But as a startup, uh, I mean, as an earlier stage yeah. startup, you're not going to go through the process of, uh, you know, of a, of a visa, you know, process uh, for someone. But if they were able to stay for, for two years after their university degree, demonstrating their value to you, that sort of thing, it makes it so much easier to hire that person. So, you know, why bring these people to our country, train them to an amazing standard, and then yeah. make them leave. It's, it's okay. short-sighted. Can, can I ask you one question? Uh, sure. As you are essentially, you are in government in a way, yeah. right? Is there an EU strategy, or do you think there should be an EU strategy to attract mm -hmm. talent? Because I mean, so here's, here's, I can tell you about our strategy for talent, right? It's less about, so, so the, the tricky thing that you, know, you were talking about is in the past when we talk about immigration, we're talking about the employees that are coming here. And those are the people that we're looking at. We're vetting their, we're vetting their diplomas, we're vetting like, um, you know, whether or not they're going to find a job and things like that. The, the, the strategy in France is to change that. Um, meaning that in France, over there, actually starting March, we're no longer looking at the employees, we'll be looking at the companies. So basically, we're all working currently really, really hard on a new executive order mm -hmm. that will say that if you are a startup, and then we have to actually put in um, an automated way of defining what a startup is, then you can hire anyone. Okay. You can hire a data scientist, you can hire an office manager, we don't really care, as long as you need it, that's fine. And the strategy here is less about like looking at, you know, doing all of this hiring planning one by one. It's really looking into the fact that, you know, in a few days there's going to be, we're going to have Brexit. There's a, a lot of people that are actually leaving the US as well. And what we're looking at is, well then how do we just, you know, let's not like look into everything line by line, how do we just become the biggest talent pool for tech, and then we'll figure it out later. Right. That's a great There's a question idea. there which like, I highlighted. Yeah. Uh, maybe you, you can read it. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. How um, 
decisive is the tax systems when it comes to attracting and retaining talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the a tax, question. Tax is that one of these things that the UK has really uh, developed. Even more after Brexit, arguably. Well, I mean, there's a whole debate as to whether or not um, they will have the freedom to do that if they want to have a deal. But that's, again, but we don't want to go down that deal, right? conversation. <laughs> but let's just keep to with what, what we know at the moment, which is SEIS, EIS, tax mm -hmm. relief for founders on EMI schemes and mm -hmm. entrepreneurs relief. And all these things revolve around if you've taken the risk to do something, whether it's investing or your work, you should retain a higher percentage of it because you were critical to changing the ecosystem. And I think those ideas have proven out like, time and time again to unlock capital and to unlock innovation. And I think it's the kind of thing that can easily roll out across other countries. Leo, do you want to weigh in? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you do. I think the, both for star visas and for taxes, there is an important argument to be made that uh, the ecosystems and the ecosystem players and the communities, they can only do so much. And there is this one point where you really need the political will. Uh, you need the support from the government that they say that, yes, this is important for us. We need those startups here. We want to build a startup ecosystem. We want to build it openly. And that startup founders are actually welcome here. And that's a very, very important part of the branding. And it's very important part of the pool itself. Branding for an ecosystem, you mean? Yeah. Sorry? Branding of an ecosystem. Yeah, no. from within the the government just needs to yeah. stand up and say that yes, we're open and we want startups here, and that the ecosystem can do their job and and try to involve them and bring them forward. But they need to do this thing uh, where they uh, star visa is one specific thing. Like we have a pretty good star visa for star founders in in Latvia, but now we're working with the government to also open up it, uh, open the immigration law also up for right. the employees as well, so it's easier to come by. We have the startup law that's actually a very great uh, tax uh, for startups uh, that gives a lot of t tax breaks for startups. But these are the kind of things that need need support from the government because you can't do it yourself. If you're closed right. off, then, then it doesn't matter what the community does. Another question from the, the audience. Oh, please. No, I was just going to say, one of the challenges that I think... We're two minutes, industry, yeah, 20 seconds. No pressure. Um, <laughs> I think one thing that our industry has as a challenge is making sure that we don't make other industries feel like we are getting a unique cut of benefits, mm. which then makes us an enemy relative mm. to other industries or, or even different stage companies, you know, where you don't want scale-ups to feel like they're not necessarily getting benefits because early stage is getting tax relief. So I think that's something on balance, which is part of the political agenda and is mm -hmm. a constant conversation. Like, how come these guys get this? Should we not have that? Is it more politically savvy to go after scale-ups because they're employing more people versus early stage that have a higher mortality rate? So I think that's part of the narrative. That's why it's not so easy. It's not like, boom, it makes sense. Let's do it. It's because there's a lot of other players that are also lobbying for their unique uh, uh, benefits. There's another question which uh, seems something we already talked about, but in reality is a bit different because it's about the grassroots level. So what has been done at the sort of micro level to train and retain talent, talent from within the country? So not government, but more, I suppose, organizations such as I don't know, Tech Hub or SITCAMP or uh, STAP type organization. What are you doing to target um, and retain talent with, 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 which is indigenous within the country. to the country? Well, organized tech chill. That's one example. Okay. That's <laughs> uh, one thing that also brings here. Um, obviously, the communities do a lot. Uh, and they go out there and they, uh, I would say, evangelize or advertise the countries. Uh, but at the same time, I think the most important role is for actual role models. That's why I mentioned Taxify. We, okay. have, we have other companies as well. For example, we have this uh, company here. It's called Printful, where actually Latvian founders went to the US, they built a huge company there, and then when they decided to expand it to Europe, then they went back to Riga and they built a, their European headquarters here. And that's actually uh, an amazing kind of role model for other potential founders, and uh, that's something we want to promote as Great. well. Elizabeth, quickly, we're 23 seconds. Uh -huh. Can you... I, I think congeal the whole thing in 20, 20 18 seconds. I, talk. <laughs> I, I think it's about um, making sure that everyone knows that startups are attractive places to work, that you do have a career there, that it doesn't mean that you get paid less than working for a large company. So it's an aspirational place to work. Great. Two seconds. <laughs> Boom. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you.